Hi everyone, I'm super excited to share this book called The Whale Savers and it's a book set in New Zealand. Now it's about a habitat and actually it's about a group of people who take action. So I'm very, very excited. It's obviously set at the beach in New Zealand. The warm breeze tugged at Nan's sun hat as Tama stood with his grandmother overlooking Shoal Bay. Now, Tama is Māori, so he speaks the language, the Māori language. So you're going to hear some words you don't know, and that means that you're listening to Māori language. Nan, hia ha tera. Tama pointed to a large black shape on the beach below. Hmm, looks like a log watched, washed up by the sea. Nan squinted. Hmm, I'm not sure. We'd better get a closer look. Yes, come on. Tama pulled her eagerly down the hillside path. Nan, it's a whale. A whale. Ehikima, exclaimed Nan in surprise. The whale glistened in the sun rasping breaths like <gasps> accompanied the whale's droplets of water cascading out of its blowhole. Its tail wobbled slowly, making lines in the sand. It's definitely not in the habitat it needs to be in. Wonder how Tama is feeling right now. How about you turn and talk to your neighbour? How are you feeling right now? Tama started, Tama stared, sorry. A real live whale in Shoal Bay? I, that means yes, I, poor thing, but it's beached, it's stuck on the beach. What's beached, Nan? Fera came too close and got stuck on the sand. Nan sighed. The poor whale is tired and confused. It's panting, <gasps> like this. <gasps> Fera is hot and needs to be back with Tangaroa. Tangaroa is the god of the sea. Tama scratched his head. How do we do that? It's really big. Aye, it's too heavy to carry. We need to keep Fera wet. Wait for the high tide, then push it out to sea. It's a big job, says Nan. So they've noticed a problem. They've had a feeling. They've talked about their problem and they're trying to take some action. Be a good boy and run home and get help. Farnau, which is family, Farnau, the neighbours, and anyone you can find, tell them to bring buckets and sheets. Go quickly. Tama nodded and sped off. Tama now has to go home and communicate with his Farnau, his family, and his neighbours and anyone else to tell them that action needs to be taken. Nan sang softly to Fera, as if it was a small, sad child lost from its parents. Fera closed its eyes and listened. I wonder how I'm feeling about Nan singing to Fera. That seems quite an empathetic thing to do. She's, she feels like the Fera, the whale, has feelings and just needs to be calmed down and know people are looking after it. Soon, Tama returned. He had a crowd behind him. Wow, awesome, a real fera. The whole village gathered around excitedly. Auntie Patty and Simon, Charlotte and Maisie, Mr. Green from the shop and the fire brigade, that was good, Cheese factory workers in their boots and aprons, the taggots, 
the family, the Hania whanau, and even the rubbish bin people. It takes a whole crowd of people to take action sometimes. You can turn and talk to your neighbour about what they're doing now. This is wet. This cloth is wet. So they take it and they wet it. They keep it over Fera. Oh, hey, the teenagers took pictures on their phone. You'll scare Fera. Stand back, ordered Nan. The whale grunted and flicked its tail. Thump, thump, thump. Nan wants the teenagers to help take action, not take photos, unless they're going to use those photos to call more people to help. Send photos and say, come and help us take action. Kids, get the sheets wet. Adults make a line down to the beach, fill the buckets and then pass them back up, commanded Nan. Someone needs to be the boss and other people need to listen so that they can all work as a team. Here we go, there's the team. They made a big line to the beach and they passed the buckets back and forward between the water and Ferra and Nan. Has anyone called the Department of Conservation? asked Rua. Aruru. Uh, Heads shook. I'll do it now. So most countries will have a group of people and those people uh, their job is to conserve or be habitat heroes. That's their job. That would be an, a fantastic job to be a habitat hero. Over and over, buckets showered water over Ferra. Look, it feels better and it's not puffing, exclaimed the children. Aye, but we need to do this for a long time. When's high tide? If you're not sure what they mean, in the ocean, not lakes, but the ocean, the water goes out and then it comes back in again slowly over, a, over the course of 12 hours and then it goes back again. I think it's 12 hours. It goes back again. And so they're waiting for the water to come in and then Fera, the whale, can float out. So they're going to have to be really resilient and keep going and maybe also call lots of other people to help them because they're going to get tired. They're basically trying to keep Ferra alive and have enough water on Ferra um, and comfortable until the tide comes in. When's the tide? Jonah peered at the waves. About six o'clock tonight. Oh, that's six hours. We're going to get tired, sighed Tama. So will Ferra. So will Ferra. We need to keep going. They can't complain of getting tired. They really, fair is tired too. Sometimes you are going to get tired or sore or hungry when you're taking action, but you need to be persistent. <gasps> Let's sing, suggested Nan, gently stroking Ferra's face. Now we're going to sing the song. The song says, big whale, long whale, very fat whale, blow from your spout, Fling your tail, whale. Wave your tail, whale. Swim in the ocean. I'm going to try singing this to you in Māori. Okay, in the language of my country, New Zealand. E hora nui, te hora no te no mo moa, te hora pupu a pua, te hora fira fua, te hora kau ana moti mana. I didn't do a good job of that. I'm going to do it one more time. I was trying to do it along with my friend who speaks Maori. She sent me it on a video. Perhaps I can put it on. Hold on, I'll do it. I can do it. Te hora nui, te hora ro, te hora te no mo mana. To hor a few a few a, to hor a few a few a, to hor a kau ana te moana. Moana, you know, from the movie means ocean. So that is a song that maybe you can sing in class. And this new begin has the words, and I have it recorded so that you can actually sing it a bit nicer than I did. Suddenly, a voice interrupted. Kia ora! Wanemele, and you know that means, hello, kia ora, 
I'm Sally Olson, Olson from the Department of Conservation. Thanks for ringing me. Remember her job? She works for, we call it DOC, Department of Conservation. And her job is to look after creatures in their habitats. Like, if you're my class, tui, kereru, kiwis, not moa anymore because they're extinct. Kia ora, I'm Sally Olson from DOC. Thanks for ringing me. You're doing a great job helping this male pygmy sperm whale. So it's a pygmy sperm whale. Aye, I thought we had it right, said Nan. I'm just going to dig a little trench to make more space around its flippers, said Sally, pulling a shovel from a bag marked Stranded Rescue Kit. So can you see there she's digging the sand out from around its fins or its flippers? so that it can move them and it won't damage them. That's a good idea. Maybe they could also, also use the shovel to dig a trench so that the water comes up from the ocean. Kids, please get some more water and pour it slowly in these holes. Kia Terry, Nan urged the children. Fera is beautiful. I feel so sad for him stuck here. Tama wiped away a tear. Sally held him close. Strandings, like when a whale beaches on the, on the, or dolphins, beach on the sand is called a stranding or a beaching. Strandings can make you sad, but we're all doing our best. In a few hours, we should be able to send our friends back home. All afternoon, the village comforted Fera. The children's arms ached, but they kept bringing water. Hmm. It's hard work taking action. You have to encourage other people to keep going. You have to encourage yourself to keep going. You might be very tired. Do you know some of the people taking action here could be the people going and getting water and food for these people or jackets to keep them warm, or they could swap places. There's lots of things you can do to take action. You just have to think and communicate. This person here is actually taking action. Stop and turn to your neighbor and say why you think they're taking action. I wonder what you had, what conversations you had. All afternoon, the children comforted, the village comforted Fera. The children's arms ached, but they kept bringing water. The adults took turns wetting the sheets. Television crews and cameras and news people came. Nan told them to stand back further. But you know that if they video this, they, and they put it on TV, other people will know what to do when they see a stranded whale. Maybe also some of them will see it on TV and they'll come down to help. So that's taking action as well. It was hot work, but slowly the sea inched closer until it was around the whale's fins. <gasps> see the tides coming in? The water's coming closer to the whale. At 4.30, Sally asked people to get wetsuits if they had them. The sheets came off Fera. Wetsuits, you know, some of you wear wetsuits when you're swimming. <gasps> Yay! As the waves, as the waves lapped, eight strong helpers gently supported Fera. Nan, Tama and the others watched from the beach with the television crew. Now again, not everyone can take action here, just some people. You have to be the right strength and the right size and sometimes you only need a certain number of people because one in a million too many cooks can spoil the broth. Slowly, slowly the water rose until it was up to the rescuers' chests. One by one the rescuers lifted their hands off. Fera could float. After the next wave, one big push. Tahi, Rua. Toru, fa, go, called Sally. I think they might have rescued him. 
fitter swim, fast and free. <gasps> okay, here's something to stop and think about. Think about feeling. All there's so many different characters in this. Fera, Nan, and Tama, who first found the whale and called for help, and all the people that rescued um, came down and took action, and the Department of Conservation Worker. I want you to turn and tell your neighbor, from the point of view of one of those characters, how did they feel? Go. In a minute, I'm going to give you an empathy chart and you can write how they felt on that empathy chart with your group, okay? Fit a swim, free, fast. Yay, the village cheered. Quick, everyone, walk into the sea and hold hands. We need to make a fence so the whale can't turn back, Sally advised. But over the wave and the next one, Fera went gracefully flicking her tail. That was a good idea to make a big long line here so Fera couldn't beach himself again. There is an example, a real life example, of a group of normal people using different skills to take action. They communicated, they had feelings and thoughts, they took action, they saw a problem. So interesting. Now, we can stop the video there, or I can tell you a few facts about um, whales in New Zealand. So you decide, let's have a vote. Hands up who wants to learn some more facts about whales in New Zealand? And who doesn't? Okay, so depending on the vote, depends whether we keep going. Interesting facts about whales. More than 40 species of whale, dolphin, and poipus live, or pur purpose, but we say poipus, live in, and know in, in New Zealand, in the water. New Zealand seas are rich with food for whales, so there is a lot of good food around in the oceans in New Zealand that whales can eat. The largest whales pass through our oceans on the way to other places. Who knows what that's called when animals move from one place to another at different seasons? Call it out? I think, I imagine I heard the word migration. So they move up actually the coast of New Zealand, then up to Australia, and they keep going. Kaikoura, maybe if you've been to New Zealand, Kaikoura in the South Island is the only place in the world with deep water canyons close to the shore. And so whales, because the water is really deep, whales can come quite close to the shore to get through those, imagine big canyons or um, canyons in that they can get through, like big tunnels under the water in a way, open tunnels. Um, if you know Mrs. Robinson or her children, Jamie and um, Jamie and Jackson, they actually kayaked with the whales last time they were home. New Zealand has the highest whale stranding rate in the world. In the whole world, New Zealand, this is the biggest problem in New Zealand. So a lot of New Zealanders know what to do when whales are stranded. And that's why the dock worker, the Department of Conservation, had a whale stranding kit. More than 300 dolphins and whales every year strand on our beaches. So if people don't rescue them, unfortunately they die. That's not good. So we need to figure out why. There's two actions. One, rescue them. Second one is how do we stop them beaching themselves? This book has loads more information. I just read the bullet points here, but there are, there's loads more information if you would like to borrow this book. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to look at an empathy map and think about how, what we felt in this book.